commercializing your trademarks. With the increase in the demand for coffee, the interest in coffee producing countries has also risen. But most coffee producers are developing countries. And when you look into it, you realize the reality of the raw materials, trademarks and labor being distributed at preposterous prices. And that is how fair trade came to be. It is the movement to pay the producers reasonable rates and provide products to customers at affordable prices through direct transactions. Based on the support raised by people all over the world, companies also began to participate in fair trade. There is another similar movement. The nonprofit organization, LYIP, is currently working to protect the brand values of producers in developing countries based on the fair pricing strategy. Thanks to their help, Ethiopia launched the project involving the trademarking and licensing of its coffee. Harar, Yirgashev, and Sidamo. These three brands were registered in 36 countries as trademarks. Having secured its trademark rights, Ethiopia gained additional profits and the distributors had to obtain licenses to sell the products. Licensing became part of the strategy to alleviate poverty in Ethiopia. The incomes of the producers increased and the plantation income from exporting coffee reached $100 million. Licensing contracts are signed in order to use the trademarks. Companies can also sign franchise contracts. Franchise contracts grant the affiliated members rights to the overall intellectual property, including the trademarks, designs, and copyrights. Products of similar quality, staff uniforms, product packaging, management, and accounting systems are also included. In return, the affiliated members must exert efforts to protect the corporate brand image. Corporations can create profits by licensing its trademarks and signing franchising contracts. The trademark can also be sold or bought. Mr. Matlani, an Indian entrepreneur, began to manufacture and sell mosquito repellent mats called Jet. The products were high in demand and he was very successful. Ten years later, the Godre Sara Lee Company, while conducting market research before launching its mosquito repellent product, bought the trademark Jet. With the sale of his trademark, Mr. Matlani gained a profit that was 100 times the amount of his initial investment, and the Godre Sara Lee Company was able to easily enter the market through the trademark that had brand recognition among consumers. Apple also bought a trademark right when it first entered the Chinese market. The trademark that it purchased was, ironically, iPad. ProView, a Chinese electronic device manufacturer, had already registered iPad as its trademark. Because Apple couldn't give up the brand, it paid $60 million to ProView and gained the right to use the trademark iPad in China. A trademark can be a symbol of the quality of the product or service provided by the company to consumers. It can also be an asset with brand value to a company. As such, if trademark rights are strategically utilized, companies can expand their businesses more stably at low costs.